Today what we're going to do is talk about free body diagrams. Um, a separate video gives the general idea behind free body diagrams and shows some simple examples. In this particular video, we're going to be doing a more complicated example. Let's go. So in the last video, we showed a person standing on a hill and we calculated the free body diagram for that person. So what we're going to do here is start with a box on a hill as such. And the hill is at an angle of theta with respect to the horizontal. But we've already basically done this, so let's make it a little bit more complicated. So now what we've done is added a person, and this is Alice. And Alice is not touching the box directly. She is pulling a rope, which is connected to the box. And she's pulling the rope so that the rope is, be, is, horiz or is parallel with the ground, and she is pulling it with a force of F sub A, which is to say the force that Alice is exerting on the rope. Now Alice, again, is not touching the box directly. She's pulling on the rope. And now we're going to add a second person, and that person is Bob over here. And Bob is pushing on the box, and he's pushing on the box with a force F sub B and he's pushing parallel to the surface of the hill. And finally, one more twist just to make this more interesting. What we're going to do is say that the box is traveling up the hill at a constant velocity. So Alice and Bob are pushing the box up the hill and the box is moving at a constant velocity up the hill. So the first thing we're going to do is decide which object we're calculating a free body diagram for. And there's a lot of them to choose from in this particular problem. We have Alice, we have the rope that Alice is pulling on, we have the box, and we have Bob. And I suppose we also have the hill. So we have to think about this. The thing that every you know that's central to this problem is the box. And so that's what we're going to do. So now we've chosen that we're going to do the free body diagram for the box itself. So the next thing to do is figure out a coordinate system. And so we have lots of forces that are acting on this, and we'll get to those in just one moment. But from looking at this, we can see that a lot of the forces are going to be acting parallel to the hill or perpendicular to the hill, which is to say the slope of the hill. So a logical choice of coordinate system is going to be one where the x-axis is going to be parallel to the hill, and the y-axis is going to be perpendicular to the hill. And again, when I say that, I mean perpendicular, uh, y is perpendicular to the surface of the hill, and x is parallel to the surface of the hill. So now what we need to do is figure out all of the forces that are acting on the object. So let's consider our box. The box has a few forces that we know about. It has the weight due to gravity, and the weight is just mass times gravity. There's the normal force. There is the force of Bob pushing. And then there's the force that Alice is exerting. Though, to be really specific, Alice is not actually exerting the force directly on the box. She is exerting Ro uh, force on the rope. So what we're going to do is we're going to write that down as a tension because it is a force that Alice, Alice is exerting on the rope, causing tension on the rope, and the rope is pulling on the box. But we are not quite done yet. There is one other force that we have to worry about, and that's the frictional force. Now, recall that the frictional force points in, uh, uh, opposes either the direction of motion or the potential for motion. And when the box is sitting still, if there were no friction, it would slide down the hill. So it would point sort of up and to the left. However, in this case, the velocity of the box is going up the hill. So the force due to friction is actually pointing in this direction. It's pointing down the hill. And this diagram is getting a little bit cluttered, but we're going to clean it up just a little bit in, uh, in a moment. OK, just to recap. There are five forces. There's the tension on the rope due to Alice pulling on it. That's T sub A. There's gravity, which is weight, so it's mg. There's the normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface of the hill, which is F sub N. There's the force of Bob pushing, 
parallel to the hill, F sub B, and then there's a force of friction which opposes the direction of motion, and that's F sub F. So now we can go ahead and actually take care of the free body diagram. All right, so here's our box, which in this case is just representing a box, um, and now we have to decide where all of our forces go. So we've chosen our axes. The x-axis points down the slope, and the y-axis points perpendicular to the surface of the slope. So let's see. So first off, we have the normal force, which points directly up. To the left, we have the tension, which is just due to Alice pulling with the force of F sub A. And remember, this tension is just the force of Alice pulling. Um, to the right, we have um, the force of friction. Uh, we also have Bob pushing, so Bob is pushing to the left, so we're going to draw that in the same direction, call that F sub B. Um, and then finally, we have the force due to gravity, and the gravity is the one, the only one that's, due, that's pointing off at an angle in this coordinate system, and that's going to be equal to mg. And if you recall, as with the other uh, video, this is pointing off at some angle theta. And so those are all of the forces. Now, we know that the sum of all of the forces in all of our directions, in x and y and in general, has to be equal to mass times acceleration. Now, recall that we're going at a constant velocity. So in that case, if the velocity is constant, then the acceleration is going to be equal to zero. So the sum of all of the forces is going to be equal to zero. That means the sum of all of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero, and the sum of all of the forces in the y direction is also going to be equal to zero. All right, so let's get specific about this. So we're going to do the sum of all the forces in the y direction first. So of course we know that it's equal to zero. So let's consider the forces that are acting in the y direction. First there's the normal force, which is acting in the plus y direction. And then there is a component of the weight, and the weight points sort of down to the right. So we want the component that works in the y direction, and that's in the minus y direction. And so it's going to be w cosine theta. Um, so if I write that down, it is the force, uh, the normal force, which I'm saying is positive because it point, points in the plus y direction, minus w cosine theta is equal to zero. And if I want to write that down very explicitly, that is to say that the normal force minus mg cosine theta is equal to zero. So now what I can do is write down the x component and the uh, oops force in the x direction is just going to be equal to zero. And so what we have here is, let's see, so first off, what points in the positive x direction? We have the force due to friction, points in the plus x direction. Then we have the component of the weight that points along the x direction. So that's going to be plus w sine theta. And again, the x direction is positive to the right, so that's why I write it that way. So minus, then, the force due to Alice, or really T sub A, because remember, it's a tension, it's, along, it's on a rope. And then minus the force due to Bob, and that is also equal to zero. And so if I want to just write that out to be just as explicit uh, about weight as before, then I'm going to say the force due to friction plus mg sine theta minus t sub a minus f sub b is equal to zero. And so um, I was just drawing the free body diagram and writing the equations. I'm not actually solving a problem, so I'm done at this point. And so we're left with these two equations. We're left with this one for all of the forces in the y direction and this one for all of the forces in the x direction. And the reason that the right hand sign is uh, right hand side is zero for both of these is because this object is not accelerating. If for some reason it was being pulled along the slope in such a way that uh, you know if, if the force was enough that it was being accelerated, then what this would be equal to uh, in the y direction it wouldn't be accelerating, but in the x direction it would. So in the x direction you'd have all of these things on the left hand side 
that would be equal to the mass of the box times the acceleration of the box. And that's it for me today. Thank you very much.